Longhorns. Longhorns start defense of their national championship from Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium in Austin. It's Big 12 football presented by Kia Zera. Preseason polls, Texas number two, and today they host the Mean Green of North Texas. Hi, everybody. Joel Myers alongside Gary Reasons, and welcome to a new season of college football on FSN. It's also, Gary, the start of a new era for the Texas Longhorns. The quarterback that led them to a 30-2 and record of the last three seasons is gone now, and it's going to be tough to replace someone as dynamic, someone as talented as Vince Young, but a very healthy situation now for the Longhorns at quarterback. Well, the eyes of Texas, they are on, on this university and on this football program. I think the eyes of the nation are wondering what's happening at the quarterback spot, and that's exactly what's going on here because you've got a competition between two freshmen, Jevin Sneed, a true freshman, and Colt McCoy, a redshirt freshman. Mac Brown decided to go with Colt McCoy. who has been in the system for a year. Hey, he's a good player. He has the ability to go out there and win, and all he has to do is execute, Joel. And I think he just used his offensive linemen. They're great. He's got a good group of receivers, and he's got very talented running backs. He doesn't have to win in this game. He's just got to go out and have some fun. Well, in four of the last five seasons, the Mean Green of North Texas have taken their league title in the Sun Belt Conference. A drop-off last year, but don't forget two years ago, Jamario Thomas led the nation in rushing. Well, he showed a couple of years ago that he's got the tools to be a great running back and had a little injury bug last year, but this, this year they hope that he can turn things around. Over the last couple of years, North Texas has done a great job rushing the football. You take Patrick Cobbs, who has done a great job running the ball last year, and two, two years ago, you have Jamario Thomas with what he did, over 1,800 yards leading the nation. They like to see him get back to that same form. They're going to have to run the football today effectively if they're going to have a chance against these Longhorns. And they also, coming in a huge underdog, Gary, they've got to create some takeaways. I think they need to get the ball back in the hands of their offense. The defense has to find a way to slow down the Texas attack. It's not going to be easy, but it's something they're going to try to get done. We are heating up for the college football season on a steamy day in Austin, about 95 degrees at kickoff. Stick around. We'll come right back and Brandon Monroe and the linebackers stop the running game. That's what Frank Ocam and the Longhorns will try to do to Jamario Thomas. Mike Goldberg and the guys in the studio are up next. Presented by Kia Sarah back in Austin, Texas, and the defending national champions before a record-setting crowd of better than 85,000. They are juiced up as we head downstairs to Jim Knox. Jim? Coach, any concern your club could be overlooking North Texas today as they look towards next week's showdown against Ohio State? Now, uh, the bigger concern is that North Texas is a good team. They've won the conference championship four out of five years. They had a tough year last year. Daryl Dickey's one of the stars in, in coaching right now for young guys. So uh, it'll be more about North Texas. We're ready to play. We're going to play hard, and we're going to play well, but I expect them to, too. Best of luck, Coach. Thanks, Jim. All right, Jim. And it's going to be a hot one, as I mentioned, just a few minutes ago. Well, 91, they said it'd be about 95, an hour into the game. We're at 91 now. Humidity feels a lot, lot worse, Gary, than 29%. Yeah, it's kind of tough out there, but I think these guys are going to really enjoy playing today. It's not going to be too bad out there. Look to get up over 95, 97, I think, later today. But uh, right now, it's probably pretty good out there for them. But Quan Cosby is back deep along with Salvin Young. Hoppo back, gets into it, and we are underway with a new season of college football on FSN. It carries well, and it's going to be Salvin Young for the touchback. So the offense of the Longhorns on the field first with a flag down where you normally see offside on the kicking team. So they may get a return before it's all over. Randy Crystal for the Big 12, our official today. Make them run again. Well, I think what they really want to do is just get their offense comfortable and have a chance to go out there with the best field position possible. So go ahead and take them back, give your returners a chance to work on the return game and make a big play, perhaps. So not the way the Mean Green wanted to start it out today. Re-kick. And they had a tough day just getting here yesterday. Oh. Daryl Dickey, <laughs> the head coach, was on the bus that broke down. It could go only so fast, about 40, 45 miles an hour. Now, about a three-hour ride yeah, they from had a, Denton, maybe they had, three and a half, and they had no air conditioning actually, for the last hour and a half. Two of their three buses lost air conditioning. Really, Darrell wasn't in any mood to talk to us when he came into the stadium. But uh, We read the situation pretty well. Very well, very well. So we get out of his way. We gave the coach a lot of space. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's had a nice run in this. His 10th year at North Texas. So Dennis Hoppelback will kick it now from his 30. And Selvin Young, Quan Cosby, who's it going to be? Cosby 
He'll bring it back from the five. And with a good block, he'll get it out past the 20. So a plus five instead of the touchback at the 20. The Longhorns will have it at their 25. Now, Butterflies, well, everybody thinks that it's going to be an easy one for Cole McCoy. And I'm talking about psychologically because he feels so prepared. Uh, in spending time and so much time last year with Vince Young, the young man from Tuscola, Texas. What a high school record. Two losses in his high school career. And he knows how to win football games. He just got to go out there and execute. He's got all the tools around him. And you're going to see a very similar offense today that you saw with Vin the Vince Young era. Not a lot of changes by Greg Davis with the new quarterbacks under center. Sweet on the short side as they go with the three wide receiver is set. And they go to Quan Cosby to start the game. Nice little kick out on the slip screen and a first down. A lot of credit for Billy Pittman on a little chip outside. Well, that's... And at our Kia Zera, starting 11, we saw the quarterback, Colt McCoy. Offensive line, one of the best in the nation. Blaylock, Dockery, Sandline, Stutter, and Hills. Hills, though, a newcomer over on the left side. And Young in the backfield, Pittman, Swede, Cosby. And Neil Tweedy is the tight end. We'll also see Jermichael Finley, a redshirt freshman they like a lot. Run the option. Young on the boundary. And good play downfield by Washington. Corey Washington, a true freshman from Cedar Park, Texas, with the stop and with authority after a gain of only two. Yes, Sierra is starting 11 defensively. And are they going to play like the mean green, the Eagles of North Texas? Chapman, Thomas, Burris up front. They look pretty nasty on those shots. Monroe, Holman, Dawson, and in Wigway. And then it's Bush, Chapman, the corners, safeties are Warren, and Weathers. Second and eight for McCoy and the Longhorns. Plenty of time and a wide open. Lima Sweet, look out. Too easy. Third play of the game. Touchdown, Texas. Well, what a great way to start your college career as a quarterback. Colt McCoy comes out and throws the very first snap from scrimmage for a first down. And now he comes back two plays later and throws a nice little seam pass that goes the distance for a touchdown. I don't think Greg Davis could script this any better, <laughs> Joel, for him to go out there and play and play well. Hey, there's a lot of weapons on the University of Texas offense. And Colt McCoy, he just got to spread the ball around. He did it well on that drive. So a 60-yard touchdown pass to their All-American candidate, a junior from Brenham, Texas, Lima Swede. And good competition in camp for this job. Greg Johnson won it just barely, and the extra point from the left is good. Took a long time, didn't it, Gary? Three well, plays, 75 yards. Well, that's what you want to do. Come out there and strike and strike quickly. You got a lot of power on your offensive line. Watch the protection here up front first. Nobody's even going to come close to Colt McCoy. He's got a good lane to throw through. The big guys do their job. And then Lima Sweet on the quick little slant pass gets behind the free safety and goes right for the touchdown. Great job catching the football and running after the catch. And you got a quarterback for his first career touchdown pass. He's got to be happy about that. Throwing right through the seam there. Great look there, guys, showing us that. And Lima Sweet almost bobbled the ball and dropped it, but he continued on stride and made the score. Yeah, right now, on the opposite sideline, not the one we're looking at, you got to wonder how it's feeling over on the mean green boundary. After three snaps and you're down that quickly. Well, Minute eight seconds into the game. Yeah, a couple of things on the defensive side for North Texas State. they got a new defensive coordinator. And they've got a new defensive system. So those two things we'll talk about more today, but that's kind of going against them starting early in the season to make sure those things are going well. And going against the Texas Longhorns, the defending champions, that's not an easy uh, thing to build on. Jamario Thomas over to the far side. Zach Muzzy, near side, waits for the kick from Greg Johnson. And the sidewinder pins him into the corner at the one. It'll be Muzzy. And he pays with helmets flying at the 20. And that couple of green bonnets on the turf there. The first career start as well for Matt Phillips. He played in seven last year. It was Daniel Baker who started all 11. The sophomore from Richardson, Texas. Yeah, on the offensive front, Phillips. We'll see the young man from San Angelo. 
Yeah, what kind him. of protection he gets early. Yeah, he's one of three quarterbacks in this system. He got the start. We're not going to see Mager. He, he made the trip, but he is not going to play. We'll see Woody Wilson as well. Yeah, pressure right away. And Johnny Quinn, before he could even turn around, Phillips was on his back. Robinson with the pressure from the defensive end. Eventually, how can they hold up? Brown, Lineberry, Rose, Venegas, and Foster. Foster with the most experience out of the group in his third season up front. Thomas in the backfield with James Mitchell. Johnny Quinn, a couple of broken bones on top of his hand. Brandon Jackson, Bo Davidson to tie it in. And that really hurt Johnny Quinn's preparation overall. Yeah, a lot of question marks whether he's going to be able to play. He won the top of the screen up here. We're going to take a look at him today. And Johnny Quinn's a guy who's got enough speed to even get behind this secondary. He's that kind of a player. Thomas tripped up, coming across the line. Brian Robinson, the other end. Robinson and Crowder. You'll hear a lot from them. And we continue with our Kia Sarah starting 11 defensively now for the Texas Longhorns and a good one. Crowder, Robinson on the ends. Loki and Ocam underneath. Very deep in the tackle position. Killebrew, Bobino, and McElroy gets the start for the injured Drew Kelson. Yeah. Round to the corner with Aaron Ross and the Griffin twin. Michael and Marcus, the safeties. A little more than two minutes gone by and already a third and ten. Phillips, better pocket protection and a low throw. Looking underneath for the Wigway. Well, that's what the Longhorns would like to have. A three and out to start that, that drive. Coming right off the early score. So both the offense and defense do it well for Texas. They've started well. And for North Texas, you know, there's really not a bad situation, Joel, to come out here and go three plays and punt. Whatever your offensive series ends in a kick, be it a field goal or a punt, you have a chance to, you know, get the ball away. You don't want to turn it over, especially down this area. Truman Spencer will punt it away and watch out. Aaron Ross, a couple of punt returns for scores. He shares the Texas all-time record. So he waits back at the Longhorns 36. Let's stay away from a wobbler. Man, what a roll. It looked like it grazed his knee. It did. It's lost. It picked up the mean green. Get a break early. Coming up with a loose ball, Devin Cox. What a break. It looked like it just grazed his shit. Yeah, it probably did. He didn't really realize when it happened, but then he said, uh-oh, I better go get this football. And a heady North Texas player came down and actually pushed him out of the way. Let's take a look at the ball. He's trying to give the get out of the way sign. It bounced up and hits his right knee. And good job of pushing him out of the way. And then he saves a touchdown. Yeah, that was Zach Muzzy making him get out of the way. And the ball pops up and is recovered by North Texas in a huge play in the kicking game. So after a low line, up with and, it. and it surprised Ross. He was trying to stay away from him. He got too close to it. Let's see if they can pound the ball a little bit. They opened up empty in the backfield. Now they've got Thomas behind the fullback. Plays under review. Now they're going to look, and the review comes from the booth. Well, there's a replay official up there, and they're going to watch this play, and they have a chance to take a look at it, and they're actually probably going to look and see whether or not it actually hit the knee of the returner back there. We couldn't see it on the very quick angle that we saw when we showed it to you. Maybe we'll have a better look at it here. Now I'm hearing from the producer that we've only got uh, those looks, so probably not going to get a very decisive call here. I, I doubt we're going to see this overturn. And that producer, Bob Steinfeld, with us on Big 12 football with Phil Monica, our director, once again this season. you got to believe the play is going to stand anyway yeah. because he made the act to go get it and lost it. That, you know, he kind of the evidence. <laughs> <laughs> so an early mistake. If you didn't do it, why would you go get it, right, Joel? Well, Daryl Dickey knew coming in. Uh, the head coach of the Mean Green, how difficult it was going to be as we talked with him earlier in the week. Win the turnover battle, uh, be able to control the ball, um, get into the fourth quarter, still within striking distance. Uh, we would have to play um, way over our heads, and they would have to have an off night. I mean, that's being realistic. He's honest. Yeah. He knows it. I think that's an honest assessment of coming in here, playing against the talent that, that University of Texas has in their football team, and he realizes where they are with their talent level. They're great. They're really good for the, for the Sun Belt Conference, but 
actually to compete in this conference. I'm not sure they'd have the quality and talent that they'd like to have or be able to do so. And Daryl Dickey, honest about the assessment, makes some turnovers to get some opportunities. Those are the ways that you may have a chance to, to, to beat the University of Texas in a football game. The Mean Green from Denton, which is just outside of Dallas, just north of Dallas and Fort Worth. And they put together a nice run under Daryl Dickey. You know, Coach Dickey, yeah, he had a tough situation this past spring and had gallbladder surgery and lost a lot of weight. Actually found out that he actually had a type 2 diabetes, so he's lost quite a bit of weight, but he's well now, and there's the recovery. Right. He went for it anyway and lost the football. Now they could also say he was down. He may have had he may have had control and down. Right. If he's down, controlled it, he's already down. He doesn't need to be touched. Hmm, I didn't actually see it hit his knee anymore. There anything to change this call, so if the officials are looking at it, talking about Daryl Dickey, you know, losing his weight and so forth, and you look on the other sideline, Mac Brown, he had a big procedure this, this spring as well, re knee replacement surgery, and how he's going to handle his preparation, being able to call this game is going to be difficult for him. We expect Mac to actually be sitting the majority of the game because he's only three months out of his surgery, and his, uh, his sideline routine is going to be very, very different this season until that injury heals itself well enough for him to stand and do the things that he normally does. Well, Mac told us the story about Bobby Bowden after he had similar surgery sitting on a on like a director's chair. Yeah. And when he was in North Carolina and, and he said Bobby and the Seminoles just licked him that day and Bobby never moved. Bobby sat in that director's moved, yeah. chair the whole day and then came back and told him, good job, old man. The play will stand as called on the field. It's a good idea. Now they sorted that out, and now we got North Texas on offense here with a chance to do something. Now there is a challenge in the Big 12, and a challenge in college football this year from the coaches. The yeah, coaches have one challenge in the ball game, and they can make that call on something that has not been reviewed already or attempted to be reviewed by the uh, by the officials. Can they get Jamario Thomas going for the 24 of Texas? No. It'll be Phillips going for the bundle, and on a jump ball, almost intercepted. No, it hits the dirt. Aaron Ross actually took it away from his own man, Marcus Griffin. They were right there. They're trying to get a Joel Nwigwe on the outside. Kind of just a zone coverage by Texas. Get the free safety over the top and the corner outside. And good help there coming back and knocking the ball away. Almost interception, as you said, Joel. I like their style, their, their strategy here. They'll throw it into the end zone. Maybe we'll have one of your receivers jump up and make a play. Possibly get a score. I'm kind of surprised that they haven't tried to get Jamario Thomas involved more early to control the ball, to keep the Texas offense off the field. And now we're going to have a timeout called by North Texas. Texas. So two and a half minutes gone by. The first of three in the first half of the Bean Green. Let's see if they can get their act together offensively because there's a huge opportunity for them. You know, capitalizing early, though, it was Lima Swee from Colt McCoy. They hooked up for a 60-yarder. Thanks along with Gary Reason. Down the sideline, Jim Knox, who's got to be sweating bullets by now, about 95 degrees. Humidity is down, though, for Austin, Texas. The drought continues, though. That was the headline of the newspaper today. And it was a little hot for Daryl Dick. We talked about it. Air conditioning out on his bus on two of the three buses yesterday. Coming from Denton. That's tough. Now Thomas sets up in the eye. Seidel goes wide. They're tied in. Little pitch for Thomas out on the edge. Breaks the tackle. He got away from the linebacker, Bobino. Good yardage down to the 16. Well, good play design here to get uh, Jamario Thomas out on the edge on the Texas defense, and only one guy to beat, and that's the linebacker. Bobino comes out and knocks him out of bounds, I think. Picked up seven, eight yards on the play, though, but a nice play call here by North Texas. Man, was there a flag at the end of the play when he went out of bounds? Because I believe that Texas was complaining that Thomas created the contact. Dead ball, personal foul, defense, number 40, automatic first down. That's on Killebrew, the strong side backer. 
Now we'll take a look here on the out of bounds play. There you see Bobino knocking him there, and he's out of bounds, and clearly out of bounds, and easy contact there by Killebrew. Not anything really malicious, but still out of bounds contact is going to result in a penalty. So the national rushing champion two years ago, better than 1,800 yards, Jamario Thomas sets it up first and goal at the eight as they took it half the distance to the eight-yard line. Phillips wide open. It's Quinn, and Quinn can't get away. Great play out on the edge by Aaron Ross. Otherwise, he gets in. Well, Johnny Quinn does a good job pulling the ball in. Quick little pass here outside to him, and he's got that cast on his left hand, Joel, and it looks going to be very difficult for him to catch footballs, but made that grab and didn't get a lot of running yardage after the catch. Good job on making a tackle as soon as he caught the football. And Johnny Quinn can motor. Johnny Quinn at 10.62, 100 meters. Now, Jamal Charles, a different story and a different league, and we'll talk about that later, the running back for Texas. Looks like a pretty big operation there on his left hand. From the six, second and goal. Delay for Thomas, nothing doing. Buried by Robinson. On top of it, almost like he was unblocked. Well, this front for Texas is probably one of the best in the nation. Brian Robinson, one of the best defensive ends coming back here for this year. And what he does, he just comes down the line of scrimmage and gets inside, and you're going to see the handoff in here, and he's just going to play down the line of scrimmage and be smart. And you see the cutback here. Brian Robinson does a good job of just staying where he's supposed to play, and that's good, uh, good discipline there on defense. <laughs> It's so a third and goal. Can they get it into the end zone? Trailing by seven. Spread it out, give it to Thomas, and slowed down to the backfield. Boy, the team speed of Texas. Forget about it again. Great penetration in the offensive set. Robinson again pinched in early. Well, you talked about the speed here. He may be able to do this in the Sun Belt Conference, but playing against his Texas Longhorn defense, they can all run and they run fast, and they're able to close ground in a hurry. And Nowhere to go for Jamario Thomas. They've got to have better blocking up front to keep out that Texas defense, or it might be a long day for Mr. Thomas getting going. Well, now they try to get free off the turnover, the punt and the fumble by Aaron Ross. Hoppelback has never hit a placement. He's a senior from Dallas. He's never had a placement in a game. He's yeah. handled their kickoffs. And as long as Darrell Dickey's been the coach at North Texas, they have never scored here in Austin. They've played a couple of times. This could be the first points ever for them. 27-yard field goal attempt, and it's blocked. Into the end zone it goes. Texas incredible with what they've done in blocks in recent years. The Kings since 2000, they've blocked 43 kicks since the 2000 season, the most in the nation. Well, ahead of North Carolina State and way ahead of Virginia Tech. It's a lot of pride here. It's Look at 39 in the middle of the field. Is that Robinson getting the football? It yes. sure is. That's his seventh kick, I believe, block that he's done in his career. Done a great job getting elevation to block that kick. It stays a seven-point lead for the long Along with Jim Knox back in burnt orange country. Boy, is it fun for us to come to Austin, Texas. We don't like it. We love it down here. The state capital, a really unique place. One of the great destinations in the country. And from the 20, the Longhorns get it back after a block kick. On first down. It's Jamal Charles, first carry of the season, better than four yards. Time for a Dr. Pepper game break. Let's All right, Mike, so for the number 15 team in the nation on a roll. So is Jamal Charles to a first down. Yeah, the offensive freshman of the year, off and running early from Port Arthur, Texas. Our keys, Gary. Well, I think the first thing for Texas they need to do is keep McCoy clean and comfy. Let him get to work back there and do his thing. Defensively, just be dominant up front. They certainly can do that. We saw a good stand here a moment ago and play like champions. Hey, they're expected to win. They're expected to do well. They need to come out and just execute. The two carries and 11 yards for Charles. And it's interesting, Colt McCoy is going to work out of the shotgun a lot, just like Vince Young did. It's not going to change their look offensively with the change at quarterback. And McCoy, line of sweep with a cushion, gave up the first down, but still gets nine out of the play on the comeback. And our North Texas keys. Now there's a few things they need to certainly do in this football game, and most importantly, it's about the running game. Their basic uh, philosophy is being able to run the football and also stop the running game. 
haven't been able to do that real well last year trying to change that on defense. They've got to get some opportunities to get the ball back to the offense. A turnover on the kicking game was great, but they got to play with poise in front of 85,000 fans here. A little bit different for them in the normal crowds of 15 to 30,000. Salvin Young has taken over. He's got a little bit of a crease and then runs into a brick wall. Jermaine Dawson, the rover back, the sophomore from Rockdale, Texas. Helmet to helmet, right on top of the situation. They're doing a good job coming down the line of scrimmage. Jeremiah Chapman as well getting contact there at the line of scrimmage. So University of Texas kind of going with a sugar huddle at the line of scrimmage, kind of a no huddle situation, changing things up here against North Texas. Run the option. It's Alvin Young. And there's almost a flag. And playing off a block was Corey Washington. There was a block in the back as Washington was hit in the back. And there is finally a flag. Great job by Washington on the edge. Well, good job of stringing it out overall defensively for North Texas. They did a good job of getting to the sideline. If you can't have the running back turn up, you got a chance to stop him short. That's exactly what happened. So rotating backs, Young. After the first down for Charles. Holding. Offense. Number six. It'll be a 10-yard penalty. He play first down. Yeah, it was a block in the back. You can call it a hold. It was Quan Cosby. We saw it all the way on the opposite side of the field. Well, Quan was out there just trying to do what he's supposed to do, and that's maintain contact. It's going to be right there, right there. It's blocked in the back and either holding one or the other. It's going to penalize against the Longhorns. So take them back 10 yards, still first down. So first down all over again, but first and 20 from their own 32. That's what you worry about in an opener. And it's going to be a dead ball foul against the offense. Prior to the snap, ball start. Offense, number 55. It'll be a five-yard penalty. It remains first down. That's the sophomore right guard, Cedric Dockery. Well, Big Dockery in the middle of the field, right by the umpire. It's going to be hard to hard to miss him. So you just kind of see him jump up in the, a little bit early. And we didn't see it too much there, but it's a penalty. Now it's first and 25, Joel. Yeah, at least you got three snaps if you're Colt McCoy. Salvin Young can't get away from the end, Jeremiah Chapman. Well, he's played well down the line of scrimmage a couple of times now. At the line of scrimmage, Jeremiah Chapman making contact with the, the Texas running backs, and Charles nowhere to go on that play. Great job of getting inside of the offensive tackle by Jeremiah Chapman. Now, you would think if a team from Texas wasn't matching up with the Horns today, maybe they'd be impacted by the weather, but it's hot in Denton, too. They're used to this. Well, they are firing off the ball. It's a loss. Now McCoy out of the gun. Plenty of time in a short game. Not much available over to Nate Jones. Well, so far what I've seen today about Colt McCoy throwing the football seems like you know, he's pretty confident back there. He gets the ball back in the shotgun, gets his feet set, reads the defense, and gets that ball out of there. One, two, three, throw the ball on timing, and that's what you want to do as a quarterback. You want to execute. So now it's going to be third, and still third and long for Texas. About 19. There's the ball back there, 33. So the Redford freshman, it was a situation like, is it always going to be this easy? He had a touchdown pass, his first career start on his third snap. Not this time so far. Now McCoy. And he'll go to the boundary. He's bumped out of bounds by the linebacker. Now that's Cliff Higgs, actually, the safety coming up. Well, we talk about Colt McCoy and what he's got to do today as a quarterback. We're going to kind of grade him, take a look at him today and see what all he needs to do. And we're going to look at his leadership ability out there, how he executes the offense, his pass accuracy. He's been pretty good so far today and maintained composure. Those are three or four of the different little things, intricacies of a quarterback, especially a new one. We'll take a look at him today, and we'll measure that throughout this ballgame. Brandon Jackson going back along with Zach Muzzy. As they send a couple back. Waiting for the punt from Greg Johnson to handle the placements and the punting. And the opener. All's away, man. Let him go. 37, let him go. It'll be Muzzy with a fair catch, and he's got it deep in Eagles territory, back at about their 15-yard line. To a timeout of the field, we'll come right back and see if North Texas can generate some offense. Only a 7-0 lead for them. Welcome back to a warm one, to say the least. And 
Austin, Texas. Handed out these little fans, and you can see them in the background. They're being used everywhere by the fans of the stands. It's in the mid-90s. Humidity is a little bit low for Austin, Texas, so they'll break there. But a key consideration for the coaching and the training staffs of these two teams. Yeah, you want to keep your players cool down best you can. There's some different techniques being used by University of Texas. I think our Jim Knox is going to talk about those today with us, so we'll take a look at that here in just a minute. Thomas comes out in the eye behind Corona Henderson from the 14. Phillips, a little waggle action underneath, going to his tight end, Bo Davidson. And he rumbles for about five with more on how to handle the heat. A degree right there. They told me just inhale plenty of water, so I guess I need some water, guys. We'll check throughout the game. Thomas can't get into the backfield. Thanks, Jim. Coming through, it was Robert McElroy. He's giving the start for the injured Drew Kelson. The redshirt freshman from Hallsville, Texas, with a tackle for a loss. Well, that's what you want from your linebackers, a chance to make explosion plays, explode up through the hole, and Roderick McElroy comes through there. Young man from Longview coming in, making a nice play in the backfield. Talk about that heat and what Jim Jim's talking about. They're able to measure those players' temperature, body temperatures, and they know some players that potentially are at risk, and they've got some techniques to cool them down potentially throughout the game. And technology playing to the advantage now on the sideline. Did he have a little hue to him, a little orange burnt orange <laughs> hue? When we looked at Jim Knox there. To the each side on third down for Phillips after the loss, and another loss tripped up, getting him around the ankles. It was Orakpo, the sophomore from Houston. Well, things just kind of squeezed on him there. Brian Orakpo on the top of the screen is going to be up here. He's going to work and get back to the quarterback. Just going to keep working inside. Good pressure on the front side. And then Arakpo gets around the left tackle. They're not able to hold him out. Good job of getting back there. Gets his first sack of the season. They're incredibly deep in their front four. We're going to see number 99 later, Roy Miller, who they think is going to be a special player in underneath tackle. The punt from Spencer. Now let's see how Aaron Ross handles this one. He slowed down, stays on his feet, maintains his balance, goes inside the 40. That's a guy that was second best in the Big 12 last year in return average. First team as a punt return had a 15-yard average. And looking back on a game and a season we'll all never forget, Rose Bowl, Vince Young, and what he did against the USC Trojans. This might have been the, most, the best performance ever by a college football player. Vincent Young showed that, hey, I can take a game on my shoulders and win a championship. And a lot of people think that he really didn't win that game by himself because he made some tremendous plays time after time. One here to win the football game. He kind of gets out of the pocket and gets into the end zone. And that's one that Longhorn fans are going to remember for years to come. I think all of us. Uh, it's pretty tough to find a game that was better than that in recent memory in college football. From the 37, Jamal Charles running with it in his left hand to the right side. And good yardage down to the 31 for a game of six. Tripped up by Dominique Green. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good job there by Tech North Texas defense running outside. Talking about repeating potential as a national champion. Hasn't been easy. This is the last, since 1998, no team has actually been able to repeat. So Texas trying to get that accomplished. It's going to be an uphill battle. They know that. But it certainly would be a great feat if they can uh, achieve it. Yeah, they've got it. Plus territory. A real short field this time as opposed to the last time when they hurt themselves with penalties. Leading 7-0. Charles making a miss again, but then the defensive back Dominic Green got him low and stops him just short of the first down by a yard. Let's head downstairs. We started all 13 last year. Lyle Sinline. Yeah, and he, he is one of the most versatile offensive linemen that Texas has. That he can play any position along that offensive line, including the center spot, and a very valuable part of that offensive group. Yeah, now Young is back in. Selvin Young in the eye. And with a flag down to the play, he's got the first down. But the umpire threw the flag as soon as it was snapped. And you notice that Derek Loki as the fullback that time in the backfield. They're going to use that this year. One of the underneath tackles. Offside. Defense. So the umpire saw that on the line. He saw uh, it, between the center and guard, he saw him lined up off. No, they so it's a few extra yards for Texas. 28 and a half. 
At our first down line, brought to you by Overstock.com. You'll find thousands of brand name products, savings of up to 70% every day of the week. That's Overstock.com. Joel Myers, Gary Reason, Jim Knox in Austin, Texas for the defending national champions. Fairly slow after a very fast start. Still leading 7-0 inside of three minutes left in the first 15 minutes of the new season. Yeah, and the Colt McCoy debut going pretty well so far. One drive early in the game, early touchdown, and now second opportunity to put points on the board perhaps. Nice play fake. McCoy over the middle on the deflection off the fingertips of his wideout. It almost got there. It was almost taken in by Jordan Shipley, his buddy, a guy that spends a lot of time with him. In fact, a great story, Shipley's dad and Colt McCoy's dad were roommates as players at Abilene Christian. Yeah, and the, the two sons have taken on that same relationship. That's great. you got a couple of guys that have played together. You see McCoy trying to fit the ball in here. Good job of jumping up in the secondary. I didn't see the number of the player who got it. Might have been, uh, is that Weathers back there, 38 tips it away? So now it's going to be second and ten. Inside the 24. Young with a flag down to the play. Turning the corner as he's bounced out of bounds by Desmond Chapman, the defensive back on that side. Yeah, we're going to have North Texas offside. I believe the nose tackle jumped into the neutral zone. So it looks like a free snap. Now, the corners for North Texas, both redshirt freshmen. When you look at their experience, it's right there in their secondary. And then they've got a true freshman who we've seen, Corey Washington, backing up Desmond Chapman and Antoine Bush. Back up behind Bush, Dominic Green, also just a sophomore. So a lot of underclassmen. Now, there may have been actually two penalties on the play. I think there was an offside and maybe a resulting potentially uh, a face mask. And so... They could take the result of the play with the face mask and get more yardage, so that I think that's what's going to be enforced. Outside, the penalties declined. Incidental face mask. That's a five-yard penalty. The game is sufficient for a first down. So an automatic first down on taking the second one down to the 12-yard line. And get, get his first down inside the 15-yard line now. So Daryl Dickey, a couple mistakes now defensively. See the offsides here jumping off. Going to be the, the nose tackle jump in there. And then at the end of the play, you'll see the face mask on the outside. And it's a quick little jump there. And here we go see at the end of the play here. Incidental face mask. Didn't really grab the face mask and jerk his head, but uh, good call by the officials. So first down with Selvin Young staying in there as a single. Two tight end set. And McCoy getting outside, breaking the containment. Back of the end zone, off the fingertips of Nate Jones. Boy, not many in that area, were there? Just three receivers. <laughs> they had a lot of bodies back there, and McCoy's trying to fit it in there. That might be a throw that you think, you probably think, maybe I don't need to throw that or throw it high out of the end zone. Yeah, or only yeah. throw it to a spot where your receiver can catch it. Good job by the defensive end here from North Texas staying home, though. And you see his receivers coming across the field and trying to fit it in there to him. Looks open, looks open. But now you got these guys that are falling back there. And he has three receivers, Gary, in about a three, four-yard area. Actually, it's a pretty good throw by Colt McCoy when I see it late. Threw it up in the air, and the ball actually was dropped by his receiver. Jones stays out there with Shipley. Young in the backfield. Second and ten from the 12. No. And a little counteraction, Salvin Young spins his way down to the four-yard line. Good ad-lib activity. Joe, so you talk about the offensive line from Texas being big and being agile. What they do on this play is they pull the offside guard and tackle around. And this is from the shotgun. You just have basically a counter play, you give it off to the back, and have the big guys come around. And when they come around the edge, they're going to clean something out. Did a great job there giving Selvin Young a chance to move the football and see what he's done in his career here. He's had some injury problems over the years, but uh, he's one of those guys that he is hes kind of the leader back there. He is the spoken leader on the football team and kind of taking things in charge right now. Well, now the power formation is low key. He's back in there at fullback. Selvin Young on the give, hammering his way, and he's just inches away. So it'll be first and goal, inches away. I mean, he was, what is it, an inch or two short? Well, he's, his body's going down before the goal line. We'll have a good look at it here with this angle, and he's trying to get in there. And watch him at the end of the play here try to stretch and reach out, but he's just going to fall short. 
Ball falls just short. Good call there by the officials. But it's yep. a first down. So and Jim Knox had mentioned that center line went over. He is back in the game. So they're starting center. He is lining up the senior from Scottsdale. And the quarterback sneak, McCoy. I believe he's there. Yes, touchdown, Texas. Short field. Only 37 yards on the drive for the Longhorns and Colt McCoy. Well, nice drive there. Now Colt McCoy gets his names in the in the newspapers because he got a he scored a touchdown. He rushed it and did a good job of leading the offense there. I think he's done a good job so far overall in his football game. No mistakes to speak of. Did a little surge by the offensive line, knocked the North Texas defenders back and get that ball in the end zone. <laughs> Eight plays, 37 yards, and three and a half minutes on the drive. Johnson for the point after. Had a 14 to nothing lead. The Longhorns on top with 64 seconds left in the first quarter. We were Jim Knox is talking about the Cool Jackets earlier. They plug in. There's 11 courts. And every one of the Longhorns wears one of these shirts, these vests inside. And then the plug in when they come over the bench. Why don't we have those in the booth? I mean, come on, with our budget? <laughs> I like the way he went silent there. It's one of the great scenes in college football. All right, he's on scoring drive. It was a short field after the return by Aaron Ross. Set it all up. So 14 to nothing, Texas. Dangerous time for the Mean Green of North Texas. And so far, it's pretty good here for Colt McCoy come into this football game, get his headset on, talking upstairs to Greg Davis about what's transpired here. And get a chance to talk about some of the new rules here in college football with the clock starting on the kickoff. When the ball is kicked off the tee, the referee will put the clock in play, and as soon as the ball is set for ready after the kick, the clock will run as well. So they feel like it's going to shorten the game a little bit, Joel. And we'll also see a change of possession. Once they set the ball, they'll wind it and start it. So they're talking about the potential of maybe 8 to 10 snaps per game fewer for the offensive units. Muzzy bobbling it on the low sinker at the 5. And did a good job just to scramble his way across the 20 out to the 22. Now the defensive coordinator for the Texas Longhorns. Has this guy been spoiled in the last couple of years? <laughs> no, he's just good. Dwayne, G uh, excuse me, Gene Chizik is uh, the co-defensive coordinator here for Texas with Dwayne Aquina. And what he's done over the last couple of years at Auburn when he was there, 15-0, this last ball games, and last year with Texas, 13-0. That's a pretty good resume. And he gets it done. He gets it done right. He's a guy that uh, has football in his blood, and he's, and he's able to get it done there. And here's a guy, and we saw him yesterday talk to him uh, in the athletic department. He knows it takes players. He's very good at what he does, but he's got some talent out yes, there. And he's the does. first He's the first to tell you. Jamario Thomas, four carries. He does not have any plus yardage. And the new quarterback, Wilson, on his way down. Arakpo with the sack out of Lamar High School in Houston. Just a sophomore for the Longhorns. Well, Woody Wilson gives him a little different dimension at quarterback, so they bring him in and have a chance to be able to make something happen in the backfield. Rackpo's going to be at the top of your screen up there. He's out of the picture so far, and he's going to come around and do a good job just coming inside. Woody Wilson not able to get away from it. The rotation, the depth they have at the front four, very apparent early for the Texas Longhorns this afternoon, pitching a shutout so far against the Eagles of North Texas. So on a hot one in Austin, it is heating up for Longhorn fans. They're pitching a shutout at 14 to nothing. We'll be right back to the state capitol. You're watching College Football Saturday, all presented by Kia Sarah on FSN. It's a little bit in Austin, Texas. Joel Myers, Gary Reese, Jim Knox, and Texas Longhorns on top 14 to nothing as we check in with Jim Knox. Uh, the Texas Dragons taking on the Oklahoma Destroyers. So uh, the, it's a really exciting new sport, and I'd like to encourage the people here in Austin or, or all around the area to come and see this on the sep uh, September 22nd. All right, September 22nd. Appreciate it very much. Shut hey, Joel, what'd you call him? What'd you call him? No, don't. Call I'm just kidding. <laughs> send him up to the booth. Come on, send him up here, Noxie. All right, Woody Wilson. Why? Crowder slowed him down. I felt sorry for the guy because 
Michael Griffin teed him up on that play. Oh, he did, but he got not until he got a pretty good gain that time, so about six, seven yards, but still third down and long here for North Texas. Woody Wilson out of Fayetteville, Arkansas. He played at Coffeyville Community College in Kansas. Not getting his shot with a mean green. So on third and long, can he get enough time? Short throw, and down to a knee to take it in. So no wigway was already down. The senior from A. Leaf, right outside of Houston. And they're going to bring the punt team on here, probably for North Texas. Bring up fourth down, and that's one of the things that the University of Texas has done a great job of, and that is rushing the punters. And what they do is they bring up a, a front that may mirror a, may look like a punt rush, but they fall out of it, or they do put pressure on the punt team. They've done a great job. They call it the posse. They really want to get these guys in, involved, and they like to rush and, and block punts and put some speed out there on the edges too to get to that to that punter. Aaron Ross is going to wait. Let's see if they can get to the punt. They've already got one block today. They'll set up for the return. As Spencer wobbles one out, it's Aaron Ross from the 37. Finds a lane. What a spin! And lost his balance inside the 41. Is that kid exciting? Well, so far, it has all worked for the Longhorns. It started third snap of the game. Colt McCoy They're going to an All-American candidate, Lima Sweet. They covered 60 yards, 7 to nothing. the Longhorns. That was only 70 seconds into the game, and then Aaron Ross coughed it up on a punt return. Bean Green couldn't capitalize. Robinson blocking the field goal try. And finally, Colt McCoy, just a couple of minutes ago, with the quarterback sneak. And that finished off a 37-yard drive. And that's where we stand right now. And two minutes gone by in the second quarter. And again, starting on the plus side of the 50. From the 41, McCoy. It's Lima Sweet. Big receiver. Takes a shot and spins for a couple of extra. Chapman. Dawson over there. Sweet big guy, though, when I say, how about 6'5", 220? Yeah, there's a big guy out there, hard to tackle, hard to get down. And these defensive backs from North Texas, the outside of the corners are young. They're just freshmen. They're starting those guys, and they're going to roll three or four of them through the line of scrimmage. And new defense this year for, Texas, for North Texas. Playing a 3-4 three, three. front instead of a 4-3 like they've been a year ago. And new defense coordinator, Fred Blyle, taking over there. Texas, not a real hurry up, but going early. Jamal Charles. Makes him pay. He's got the first down, down to the 29. And what an advantage, Gary, for the offense when they're ready to snap the football and the defense is just still walking into position. Well, this is kind of a little sugar huddle. I called it earlier. You stand at the line of scrimmage, you get the call, play call from the sideline. It's all signaled in. Quarterback doesn't have to do anything other than just go up there and execute. And everybody's looking at the sideline, seeing the play called. And they all know they get up there and saves time in the game and just makes the defense not be able to make changes with the personnel. Keep Charles in the backfield. Pressure comes, and it's a jump ball. Sweep had it knocked away. And it was Dominique Green on the coverage with the flag down. Now, Dominique Green actually had pretty good coverage there on Swede, but knocked the ball away with his left hand. But with his right hand, I think he pulled... Lima Swede down, and that's what's going to be the penalty here. Good coverage. He's underneath, sees the football, knocks away, but his right hand, he's on top of, and that throws the penalty. Yeah, there's that's a hook out. Hey, see his right hand grabs his jersey. <laughs> Defense, number two. It'll be a 15-yard penalty from the previous spot and an automatic first down. Yeah, first downs now. Eight to one, and the only first down for North Texas came by way of penalty to yeah. set up that field goal try. Uh, all Texas early. This Texas defense, don't forget, we'll go over some of the numbers later when they're out there on the field, but they were among the top ten in total defense in the nation last year. Not exactly a surprise. Yeah, and you have an offense that averages over 50 points a game last year and over 500 yards of offense. They led the nation in scoring. Well, they'd, they'd like to get back to that form for sure. Misdirection look. Look out. And down to the two with a flag down to the play. Myron Hardy, the sophomore from Austin, with the catch. Now we got a flag so we, in the backfield. Without a doubt, but we're so the passer, defense, number 41, half the distance to the goal, first down. I like the misdirection. First, we saw the counter when they were bringing the offensive lineman with the counter action on the running play. And that's similar misdirection, deception. 
Yeah, that's confidence in your quarterback, being able to make that fake and throw the ball out there. I think Colt McCoy's got a pretty bright future here. He's doing a good job running this offense so far in this ball game. Every time he has thrown the football, Joe, it's been uh, very accurate. Gets his feet set, knows what he's supposed to do. It's execution. He's been in the system a year. You see the hit there. Maurice Holman, number 41, hitting the quarterback after he throws the football. That's the penalty and hitting him to the head. Yeah, they've got the tackle once again in front of Selvin Young, and he walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Texas. A lot of coaches will tell you nothing better than power football, and that's exactly what Texas does here. They just power, power, power on the left side. They bring the big fullback outside and the, pull the left side of the line, and nobody there to really slow them down. Good job by the offense of punching the ball in. Again, though, a short field all set up by a great return from Aaron Ross. When you've got all three areas working for you, as they do. Special teams are a huge factor for Texas. Johnson with the point after. Bad purpose beginning for the Longhorn. <laughs> so with low key in the backfield, he can clear some space, can he? That tackle and pullback. It's an easy one. 21 to nothing lead for Texas. Preseason number two, the defending national champions. But don't forget, right after our college football tomorrow night between TCU and Baylor is really something else. That's tomorrow night, right after TCU Baylor here on FSA. Joel Myers, Gary Reese, Jim Knox down to the sideline. We continue from Austin, Texas. No Wigway is back deep. He's back there along with Evan Robertson. And No Wigway will stay in the end zone. Now another short field on that nice Nissan scoring drive. Certainly four plays, 41 yards, less than two minutes. And it was Selvin Young on uh, the touchdown run. So Daryl Dickey's North Texas squad gets it back. They've only got one first down. That's after the takeaway. And uh, fumbled punt by Aaron Ross. The first down came on a personal foul call against Texas. See if they can get some just stay on the field for a sustained drive. You know, I went to watch uh, North Texas practice a couple weeks back in camp, and Woody Wilson really impressed me at quarterback. His ability to move the ball and do things outside of the pocket, a little uncommon for them, and they tri typically had pocket quarterbacks. You can see his, uh, his footwork here. He made a miss that time, and now showing some good wheels like you talked about as he's got it to the 25 for a gain of five. So that's a big play, the way things have gone so far. The first down marker all brought to you by Overstock.com. Whether you order a big screen TV or a comfy leather chair, it all ships for only $2.95. Shop and save at Overstock.com. Well, Daryl Dickey, the head coach for the Mean Green of North Texas. The name Daryl? Well, Daryl Royal is who his family had so much admiration for. But he wasn't going to be named Daryl originally. We'll tell that story after this snap. Something completely different was in the plans for him. Five minutes gone by in the second quarter. DeMario Thomas racked up. It was Brandon Foster. Yeah, Brandon Foster stepped right up in the hole and tagged him right, right between, between the numbers. That's what you want to do and make a good firm tackle. DeMario Thomas not able to get going. And actually, Marcus Griffin, 26, not 28 Fosters. It's all bunched up there. But back to Daryl Dickey. Daryl Dickey on delivery day. And in the delivery room, he was going to be, his dad wanted to name him after one of his college coaches, Floyd Wagstaff. And one of the nurses in the delivery room said, Floyd Wagstaff, you name him that, they're going to call him Waggy. <laughs> so he had so much admiration as well for Daryl Royal. That day it was decided. He was Daryl Dickey, not Floyd Wagstaff Dickey. Wilson in trouble and on his way down. Robinson over there, also in on the play. I think a little miscommunication by the North Texas offense that time. Actually trying to figure out what they're trying to do here, whether to throw the ball or just kind of run it outside. And you got a receiver blocking down here. Johnny Quinn, that's actually an illegal block, blocks in the back. But 
everything broke down for Woody Wilson. He had nowhere to go with that football. Good job by the Longhorns of just making something happen. And one of the first snaps of the game for Scott Derry, a junior, Pearland, Texas. To another punt as they failed to get a first down. And off the side of his foot, another that is going to start way deep in North Texas territory. So another short field when we come back as the Longhorns are going to have it at the 35-yard line. Now they've been stopping the run regularly, whether it's the quarterback of Jamario Thomas. Well, Colt McCoy on the sideline, even though Texas has the football, a real productive start for this young man in his career debut. 110 yards with a touchdown toss. He's been on target. And now it's going to be Jevin Sneed. And it was a great battle during camp between these two. Yeah, we knew that both were going to play. Mac Brown told us he's going to play both these young men. And nice little birthday present here for Jevin Sneed. It's his birthday today and chance to play for the University of Texas as, as a true freshman now at quarterback. Colt McCoy's going to have a birthday in three days. So both these guys, uh, pretty fun special weeks for him. And throwing right away to Jordan Shipley. And good yardage taking the defensive back with him, Desmond Chapman and Antoine Bush on that side. Very similar play that Greg Davis called for Colt McCoy for his first shot out there. And take a look at Jevin Sneed, a young man from Stephenville, Texas, just south and west of uh, Fort Worth. Not and it's interesting, he came in and started in January, last January, so he could play spring ball. And what a head start he had. Yeah, just by being in the spring practice, you're able to gain 25 practices or so with the, with the team. And... Get that knowledge about the system. That'll give you a chance when you come to fall camp to compete, and he did so. Jamal Charles, he's got it for four. Not exactly a perfect exchange between the two that time. A little bit high and almost late. Well, that's that play that they've run over and over again with Vince Young back there, and it's nothing new to this offense. Just handed off to the back out of the shotgun, and talked about Jevin Sneed and Colt McCoy, their differences. When you ask Mac Brown, he goes, they're the same guy. It's just really, they're just very much of the same size, about the same speed. They both run 4'7 or better in the 40, so they've got those intangibles, and both of them a little over 200 pounds, and both of them have pretty good arms, so they're not really disappointed with the play of either one of them, just Colt McCoy has more experience at this point in the system, being that he's a redshirt freshman. Loki at fullback. Selvin Young takes over a tailback, and they crash down the right side completely. Boy, do they watch the right side of the defensive front. So it's going to be a first down to the 20. Now that play was supposed to come inside, and he actually bounced it to the outside. Good read by Selvin Young. And let's head downstairs. Noxie. All right, thanks, Joe. We told you earlier, Lyle Sinline came in back into the game. He retaped that ankle ankle injury. Well, he's back out. In fact, he's in the training room. They're reevaluating that ankle. He may not play the rest of the game, guys. Yeah, they had to replace a couple of starters from last year. Will Allen gone and Jonathan Scott. So they want Sinline to be the anchor of that defense at center up front. So Dallas Griffin, the junior from Katy, has taken over at center. You know, first down for the 20. And it is going to be a dead ball foul delay of game. Delay. Offense. Now, true freshman, Jevin Sneed, his first series at this level. And we saw some penalties as well. First couple of series with Colt McCoy, Richard freshman yeah. in there. Well, those are just all things that happened in the course of a ball game, the first ball game of the year. A couple little mishaps. Nothing really major for either for either of those quarterbacks so far. So now first and 15 for the 25. Hardy tried to run before he had it. The sophomore from right here in Austin, you can see, took his eyes off it. Yeah, that's something you have to do. Just focus, pull that ball in, and Myron Hardy not able to pull that ball in. Good throw, though, by the quarterback. Sneed shows he's got a pretty lively arm. Puts it out there real quick. On the carry, it's Sneed. And Jevin Sneed, he can run the football. 23-2 and two record as a starter. Two-time All-Stater. And as Mac Brown said, maybe the only difference between the two, different levels. One was 5A, yeah. one was 2A. Yeah, they're not too far apart in the geographic area of where they actually played. These guys are not Vince Young running the football. There's no doubt about that. They've got good running ability, and they're good athletes, but they don't have that extra gear and that escapability that Vince Young possessed. 
it now on third and long. And behind, Chipley intercepted right through his hands and picked up by Antoine Bush. Now well, that's a good play by the secondary of a bad situation for Texas. That ball actually should have been caught by the receiver. Goes right through his hands and right in the hands of Bush. He's actually behind in coverage. Should have been a first down. Can't fault this on the quarterback here. Jevin Sneed, one, two, three, steps up into the pocket. Good lane to throw the football. Maybe a little bit backside, but really should catch that football. Ball's in his hands, and it pops right in the, the bush. So Antoine Bush with the takeaway. And North Texas, and here's the difference, and one of the differences in trying to speed up the game. In the old days, well, the clock would still be stopped. They're now winding it once they set the ball on a change of possession. Yeah, and so offenses now have to move, get right out there on the field very, very quickly. And They've got it at their own 13. And it's going to be a timeout called because they got the last player on very, very late. Timeout, North Texas. That's their second. Take our steam timeout of the half. We'll do the same as we come back and see if Daryl Dickey squad get it going off. All right, Mike, and uh, you guys are right. Longhorns defense, it's going to be interesting at home. Don't forget, last year, their national championship season, as the guys mentioned, their defense has got it together. Tenth in the nation. They're eighth in scoring defense. Just gave up 16 points a contest. So there's no great drop-off on that side of the line. And they're front four, as deep as any you'll find in the country. First down, Mean Green, they're on 13. Jamario Thomas finally wheels to the outside. Wow. But the first two caught up with him. Get excited about a game of four as Marcus Griffin put him up and out. Now, the first down marker all brought to you by Overstock.com with live customer service and an online best price guarantee. Shopping online has never been easier. Overstock.com. Well, that was a sea of orange. Jamario Thomas comes around the corner, thinks he's going to make something happen. All of a sudden, it just shut down on him, and then four or five orange jerseys propelling backwards. And everybody talks about Ohio State, but don't forget every year the biggest game for Texas, the Red River Battle. Cotton Bowl every year this year, October 7th. So a game of almost four. Try the other side, the wide side for Thomas. And back into the first two. Good game, though. Got about five. He'll be short of the first down. Aaron Ross over there. Yeah, good block out front there to allow him to cut back inside. Picks up four or five. Going to have a chance here on third down to convert. Talking to Gene Jizik, defense coordinator for, for Texas. You know, one of the goals that they have is points, Joel. He says the most important thing stats-wise is points scored. And it feels like if they can be 13 to 15 points scored against right. them in the game, but they'll have a chance to be the top 10, even the top five in the nation in total defense. And that's a goal for them. They want to shut people out. They want to, you know, hold the numbers down. And with an offense and the weapons that they have at the University of Texas, if they're able to play that well on defense, they're going to win a lot of football games. So a little more than three left in the first half of the new season. And they're working on a shutout so far. Thomas needs a yard. And took too long. Great lateral pursuit, the team speed, Bobino over there early with Derry. Well, Tim Crowder, number 80, he's the one that makes this play happen. The defensive end on the left side. Watch him come down the line of scrimmage right there and just kind of string things out. Takes two blockers all the way to the outside, and finally he's the one who gets the first contact on Jamario Thomas and does a nice job of the rest of the orange shirt just meeting him at the point of contact. So again, it's going to be a short field coming up with Aaron Ross waiting for the punt as there's a time of the field. And it's the Longhorns have taken a timeout. That's their first of the half. So plenty of time to get something going offensively. The first door. Him not back in Austin. Now, what a weekend to open the college football season. Labor Day weekend. Good to have you with us. Start of the new one on FSN. And the first of three. A triple header today. There's Michael Griffin. He's got speed. He wants to come block him a punt. Another wobbler. Harris. Uh, Ross rather stays away from it and a good roll for North Texas Let's head downstairs this is in their own territory, but still at the 37 yard line yeah, And the clock running now the change of possession to put the ball in place So the referee wound the clock so the clock is moving Colt McCoy has to be aware of that. He has taken over Jevin Sneed had one drive And little flare for young 
makes a miss in the flat. Good job. He got away from Corey Washington. Isaac Thomas finally caught up with him. Well, I think they're trying to do their two-minute drill here and trying to save some time on the clock. So Selvin Young might have wanted to run out of bounds there, give him a little opportunity to save some of those precious ticks. Now just getting under two minutes. What a job of this defensive unit of Texas so far. Only one first down allowed. And that was off a turnover and a penalty. McCoy, plenty of time. And, well, Billy Pippen made his cut, and it hit him in the chest. He wasn't ready for it. Well, that's what you call throwing the ball on your back step when you hit your fifth step back there. It's exactly what Colt McCoy did. His, did. He got his foot planted, threw the football, one, two, three, boom. Step up and throw the football, and Pippen's got to get his head around just a little bit faster. Pippen, the junior from Cameron, Texas, last year had 34 grabs. He had some kind of average for the Longhorns. Second team all Big 12. Yeah, and the protection up front. These guys are doing a great job of keeping this quarterback clean. I talked about that early, keeping him comfy and clean. Third down and short, and the grab on the outside. It's the first down for Quan Cosby. Well, I know there's a lot of defensive coordinators across the country, and particularly in the Big 12, watching this game and wanting to get a bead on this quarterback and how he's going to operate. And, I think they're seeing what I'm seeing, that it's going to be a long road to go against this Longhorn offense again with this set of quarterbacks, Cole McCoy and also Jevin Sneed. Stop it momentarily for the movement of the chains, and here we go. Plenty of time again for McCoy, and coming back on it, Pittman fell down. There's going to be a flag because it was a shove with the ball in the air. Yeah, that linebacker made contact with him, no doubt about it. Derek Mendoza came up and actually pushed the receiver. Point of the foul on an automatic first down. Pass interference, defense number 51. Fifth spot foul, automatic first down. Now there's going to be Mendoza coming up there on the contact. And see the contact and the hit there beyond the five-yard line, and that is a penalty. McCoy out of the gun on first down. And an almost perfect toss, and it was a tough one. He's trying to go to Billy Pittman. Good job coming over. Steve Warren to safety, knocking the ball away. Well, we were all spoiled last year by the offensive numbers with Vince Young, a quarterback. As Texas led the nation in scoring, averaged 50 a game. They had such balance in their offense, third total offense. This is what they've done so far today. There's naturally going to be a drop-off. Vince Young, not to say he was a freak, but he had a linebacker's physique, and he ran like a wide receiver. And now McCoy showing some good front work. How about this run by Colt McCoy? He's not young, but he made the most of the opportunity. Well, I was just about to make the point that uh, Matt Brown wanted to find different ways to make explosive plays, knowing that Vince Young is not there, and he made a lot of explosive plays. Well, guess what? Looks like Colt McCoy, he might have some of that ability, too, make some explosive plays, which are 12 to 15 yards or longer from the line of scrimmage, and he was hoping to get that from his running backs and wide receivers, but hey, it's great if he can get it from his quarterback as well. That's 22 yards on the scramble by McCoy, all the way down to the 15, first down, Texas. Jamal Charles weaves his way into the seven, and that was off a low snap, and it was almost out of rhythm because the snap was low, and don't forget sent line not in there is Dallas Griffin. That's just good poise by McCoy getting the ball. It is a low snap. He picks it up and gets it to Charles. You see the ball down. He goes down for it, and good patience there. He gets in there behind the big guys, and that's what you need to do as a running back. Make sure you let to get those big blockers out in front of you. He hides. And he's not a small guy. 6'1", 195, Jamal Charles. Second and a couple. Charles again. He's got a first and goal inside the five, but the clock moving now. Still two timeouts on the board, though, for Texas. And they get a timeout call here with about 30 seconds to go. Well, they wanted to get Colt McCoy with a chance to run this two-minute drill here at the end of the half, and they could use their timeout in the punt game to preserve some time and done a good job bringing them down the field. Obviously, you know, he can run the ball with 22 yards. That's uh, pretty impressive for a quarterback. Well, he was a catalyst on this drive so far. 
tomorrow. College football special. Am I? And I think there's a little bit of animosity between those two programs too. Talking with the head, you know the head coaches, you know they're kind of square off a little bit themselves. Just a little, uh, he said, she said kind of a thing. Should be a good ball game. You know, North Texas is coming into this ball game from a, from a year ago. Defensively, Joel, they were allowing 220 yards rushing a game, and any defense coordinator is going to tell you that's just not good enough. And they've made made a change there. They made a new defense coordinator to switch. There, Fred Blyle is going to try to turn that around. And in 2004, when they played well, they were giving up about 170 yards a game, which is you know that's a little bit better where you'd like to be as far as a running game. So they're trying to turn that around here and. But it's going to take a little bit of work. They're going with a new front, 3-4 front, and everybody's got to learn how to fit within that run scheme. And a game against a Texas Longhorn squad. It's going to skew the numbers a little bit. Pittman bunched up with Quan Cosby. Matt Colt McCoy throwing for it on first and goal. The low throw in a drop. He went real low to his tight end. Uh, Neil Tweedy, who almost looked like he's cramping up when he came up, but he's okay. And Jermaine Dawson laid the hit on him. Now kind of a low throw and back to the outside, but that's one that probably should have been caught by the tight end. But he's not going to do anything with it once he gets No, he's going to make contact. They're pretty good protection inside. You see Dallas Griffin, the center, give him a chance to throw the football. and it's Not a terrible throw, just need to catch that football. But it does save time by uh, not having the clock continue to run. So second and goal, just inside the five. Spread the defense again. And it batted down and well timed by Dawson. So a good sequence for Jermaine Dawson. Yeah, Jermaine Dawson comes in there and does a good job here of not jumping at the quarterback. A lot of guys will come in there, see a quarterback about to throw it, and actually jump and try to make this play. He just runs right through him. Watch Jermaine Dawson at the top come right there and just keep his pace. He doesn't jump to the last second there and knocks the ball down. Good play. Yeah, wide receiver was wide open. You got a one, one right there, and you got one right there. Take your pick. And the tight end, who was flashing out Twitty over to the right side, out of the picture. So a third and goal with 22 seconds to play. Still a timeout up there for Texas. Man, that's why I bring up the timeout. Selvin Young, what a move. Touchdown, Longhorn. How about that shift in cut? Well, I tell you what, this is impressive here. Selvin Young looks like he's going to be tackled right near the line of scrimmage. A little shovel pass to him by Colt McCoy. And they've just kind of moved everything out of the way. Everything opens up here. And guess what? Sean Early, goodbye. <laughs> Good quickness. And Selvin Young back to his old form. So Greg Johnson in for the point after. 16 seconds to play in the half. No surprise that Texas was going to get theirs. The only one we wondered about was Jamario Thomas and Anthony Green, whether or not they could generate some offense. And that has been absent so far. Second of the day for Shelvin Young. He had a two-yarder earlier. That's a well-conceived play here. you got to get everybody spread out and get it to your playmaker in the middle of the field. You see the, everything open up for him. Offensive lineman working the outside. He's got one guy to beat, and he certainly does. Gets around Sean Early for the score. That wasn't fair for the linebacker, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's a 10 play, 63-yard drive. Take a little two minutes, more than two minutes off the clock. Being that I used to play that position, I understand the feeling there. You know, sometimes you get blocked up with those really fast uh, running backs. And you don't have that quick feet. It makes it hard to make those plays. Even if you think you are quick, it doesn't work. You see Mac Brown walking the sidelines. and wonder if he's hurting just a little bit. His knee, his left knee, he yes. had knee replacement surgery. And he's not getting along real well. He's just no. kind of hobbling out there. And there was talk that he might actually be having a stool out there on the sideline. I haven't seen him do it. Seems kind of straight-legged there. Said he's going to wear a, not a brace on it. They won't allow him to wear a brace on it, but he's just going to wear a, a sleeve on it. I guess a, a hose to kind of keep some compression on it. His left knee. His he left showed knee. us yesterday. Pretty good slice in there. Yeah, he, he had pretty good surgery on it when he had replacement surgery. So he's got titanium in there. <laughs> it's out of bounds. So it'll be green. Good field position for the final 12 seconds. And they do have one timeout remaining. Yeah, one of the neat little stories that Mac Brown told us we were up, up visiting his office yesterday. I asked him, said, what is, he's got a lot of memorabilia. Kick out of bounds. 
kicking team. Ball will be put on the 35 yard line, first and 10. And we were talking about his member visit. So, Mac, what is one of the most fun things in here, things that you like? He pointed to a flag over there, Phil Mickelson. He and little Phil had a little thing going. Phil said, hey, if I win a major, you win a national championship, we'll go to Cabo. With Phil, wait a minute. You win by 25 guys and I win yes. by 25 guys. <laughs> Phil won his major. He signed the flag, sent it to Mac. And when Mac won the national championship, they hooked up this spring and they went. Now, Woody Wilson. And he'll run it out of bounds. Max says the problem is, is that's the end of the half. I've got a lot more than 25 <laughs> yeah. guys that want to go to Cabo to play golf with Phil Mickelson. You bet. So a good start for Colt McCoy in particular. The redshirt freshman getting the start. His career debut for the Longhorns at a 28 to nothing halftime lead. As well. We had the, a couple of things that we messed up on our punt. We had the turnover down deep that cost us points, but this is a better North Texas team, too. I thought they would be. Darrell's got them playing well. They're playing tough, and we're going to have to come back and play the second half. Defense right now, minus seven yards North Texas has rushing the football. Well, that's been the difference in the game. We've made some good plays passing. They've put a lot of guys up front on defense, and it's been tougher for us to run the ball, so we need to run it better the second half. But our defense is playing really well, and we've thrown the ball well. Thanks, Coach. Joel? All right, Noxie, you're right. The, the offense has been sound with a rookie quarterback. But it's the story of the day. It's the effort of the defensive unit. And in particular, the front seven has been phenomenal for the Texas Longhorns. Halftime score, Longhorns 28 to nothing. Let's join Mike.